with that 3-0 and start, what have you liked about the team so far? What do you think has allowed you guys to be so successful early in the season? Well, so the first two games, we, uh, we jumped out to early leads on both teams. And then one of the things that I knew coming into this program is we have to learn how to win. And, you know, we struggled to close those games a little bit. So one of the things that I was really happy about was when in the third game when we played South Hagerstown, we, uh, we got a little bit of a lull in the first quarter and then jumped out and we went on a big run in the second. And we never gave that lead back up. Uh, we uh, actually extended it a little bit even. So uh, I thought our team grew up in the first three games. You know, we, we haven't had a winning season here in a decade. So, you know, learning how to win is, is something you can't really quantify, but it's a real thing. And uh, I think we're starting to do that. So obviously still a lot of progress left, but uh, I was really proud of that. And to help you get through that process, it looks like during the off season, you guys went to a lot of different camps in the region to talk about how that really benefited your program too. Yeah, well, the first one we went to was Mount St. Mary's, and truthfully, you know, you know how it is in West Virginia, you get the three weeks of practice, so that was at, like, the first weekend of the three-week period, so we had, like, four practices, and uh, really, we just went to Mount St. Mary's, and we were just kind of winging it, uh, didn't really know what worked with the group we have and things like that, and uh, so we honestly, we went down there, and the results weren't what we wanted, but we competed in spurts against teams that are really, really good, and uh, I think... Even though the you know our record wasn't what we wanted it to be at those camps, the kids still was like, okay, if we can compete with these teams without anything in, with no install or anything like that, then you know we're going to be okay. And then the second camp, we went to Liberty University, and I would say the teams there are more they're, they're very similar to what we see in our area. You know, you see some size, you see them run a lot of sets and stuff, um, and then you see your mix of teams that get up and press you, similar to like a Martinsburg or Jefferson. So I thought it was great for us. We went down there and we did a great job, and we only lost one game, and so. Seeing the team grow up in just, you know, a couple-week period was really big for us. You mentioned seeing this team grow up and grow. It's a young roster for you, just one senior in uh, Josh McCarthy, who's one of your top scorers as well. Um, but just what's it like with you being in your first year to have a young team, knowing that you can kind of grow with these guys over the next couple of years? Yeah, it kind of changes the way that you look at things. Cause if, if you have a roster that's senior laden, you know, you definitely want to go and do something that's going to win now. Where right now, you know, we, we obviously want to win now, but we know that this is a process and we have a bright future. So when you see the JV guys and it's oh, like the other night we had a JV team and, you know, we had five freshmen on the floor and, you know, they were doing a really good job against a tough South Hagerstown team. And when you see them, they look on the varsity floor and then all of a sudden you have three sophomores and a junior out there, you know, the future is really bright. And it's it's something that, you know, we can really build on. You know, we, we said when we came into this, you know, year one might not be exactly what we want, but we can make strides. And then years two and three is where we really start to make progress. And uh, I think we're a little bit ahead of schedule. We just got to keep progressing. Since we're on the topic of the roster, a lot of fresh faces in a Patriot uniform, whether it be those freshmen that you speak of or, a few guys that I've also transferred to the school just uh, go in detail and tell us um, who you have on the team this year and who are some guys that have really shined so far through the first three games. Yeah, so we'll start with some of the returners first. You mentioned Josh McCarthy, and Josh is a great leader for us. He can really score the ball, and I think he's going to have a coming out party this year and make people realize who he is, even though he was a part of the team last year. And everyone knows about Chris Dolman. He was our all EPAC kid. He's a great point guard, and uh, He's really in a role where he can facilitate now, and that's where he shines. He's averaging about 10 assists through the first few games, which is really good at the high school level. And then Sean McCarthy, who played a lot of JV for him last year, um, he's done a great job of being a leader for us as well. He's a kid. He's rock solid. He's going to be our best defender. And then uh, George Welty, he, you know, he can't go size. And him being 6'7", six, 6'8", six, uh, he's made so many strides, and he's healthy now compared to last year. Some of the new guys, um, obviously, you know, Chet Gore comes over from Jefferson. And Chet's done a great job. I think through three games, he's averaging close to 15 points and 10 rebounds. And so that's obviously huge. And then DJ Boardley is just, a, you know, he's a pure scorer of the basketball. He scores on all three levels. Um, he's, uh, he's done a great job buying into us and what we want to do defensively, too. I, I, I told DJ all through the summer, scoring comes so easy to you. If you can put the rest of the pieces of your game together, then you're going to be really tough to stop. And he's done that. You know, like I said, he's... He's a natural scorer. You don't average close to 25 a game in high school like he is right now if you're not. And, uh, but he's done a great job buying in. And we, we have a lot of nice pieces. Even like Leslie El Machado does a great job off the bench for us. And he's just this little guard, but he's so quick and brings energy. Um, we got a nice mix. And like I said, you know, outside of Josh, we get everybody back again. So that's definitely a positive. Coach, you guys have Berkeley Springs on Friday. And then uh, the Skip Fowler Invitational, we'll, we'll get a chance to see your team for two games. But um, – 
just, you know, during this stretch in the early part of the non-conference schedule, what are some things you're trying to accomplish in the non-conference to carry over into what's going to be, you know, a challenging conference like it always is in the EPEC? Yeah, so really, like, some of it's trial and error, and I think part of that's having a new group and a new coaching staff. I mean, you know, we, uh, like, we kind of guarded James Wood in a way, and then we went back and watched film as a coaching staff, and we're like, okay, well, that didn't work at all, so we got to fix that. And you're trying to do it on the fly. Like, you can try to tweak stuff in the summer, and you can kind of see it in practice, but, I mean, until you're under the whistle in a game situation, you don't really know. And then finding the right rotation, you know, it's, it's not always, you know, you want your five most talented kids on the floor who works well together and who clicks. Some people, like, if they have similar skill sets, maybe you'd want them in the game together or don't want them in the game. And so we're kind of, you know, messing with the roster a little bit in the rotation and trying to figure that out. Uh, but really, like, with this group, I, it's confidence. You know, we have to know that we can win games, and we have to know when we suit up against Musselman and Jefferson and all the teams in our area, you know, that we, we can go compete. And it hasn't been like that at Washington for a long time. So I think the mindset more than anything is what, what needed altered, and hopefully we can get there. Other than confidence, maybe with more of the fundamental side of things, what do you feel like some of your team's strengths are so far, and what are some things that you guys are still trying to fine-tune? So through three games, we've really scored the ball well. We haven't scored under 60 yet, uh, so that's a positive, and that's something that, I'll be honest, during the summer I didn't know would be like that, and part of that's just having a new group of guys trying to figure things out. Um, we also have a lot of size. I mean, we have one of the bigger kids in the area, George Welty, who's, like I said, 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, Chet Gore is 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, DJ Bordley's really long and athletic at the wing spot. Sean McCarthy's got some size. So uh, I, I think that can be an advantage for us. We've done a really good job rebounding. And then our guards uh, are really solid in what they do. And we have three guys who are kind of the same size and play with great pace. You know, Chris Dolman, Leslie Machado, and even Braylon Barry off the bench. Um, so I, I think we kind of got a balance. And we can do a lot of different things with different lineups. We can go small because Chet, we can put him at the five. And he's got an outside game. Uh, like he's shooting, you know, over 50% right now from the three-point line. So, uh, you know, just we have a variety of options that we can that we can use, and I think that's difficult for teams sometimes. You know, when you're getting scouted in your area, teams like to do this, to take this away. Well, I think we can mix and match lineups a little bit to, to make that a little more difficult on people. Coach, when talking to uh, football coach Terry Ray, he's talked a lot about trying to build a community, trying to build excitement around the program on the football field. What are you seeing with this early start in terms of excitement about this bas boys basketball program? So when we played South Eggerstown the other night, again, non-conference game, and, and the grand scheme of things really doesn't matter all that much. Um, we had a student section that was loud. Uh, they were ready to go so much to the point where when I did an interview with home team sports after the game, they were like, you know, we, we almost couldn't hear ourselves sometimes up here. And that's huge. I mean, they haven't had that in Washington for a long time. Uh, just the buy-in from the community is great. And part of it, is, you know, me and Coach Van Meter, my assistant, we're, we're down here working now. So we get to see the kids, not just our players, but all the kids in the hallway, um, you know, talking to them, getting out at, you know, at lunchtime, things like that. Um, the community's really, really bought in. And uh, it's one of the things that I knew was going to be a hurdle when I got the job. You know, Washington's still a relatively new school. It, didn't, it opened in 2007. Uh, so for a long time, Jefferson County just had one high school, and that was Jefferson. And so even, you know, people that are right next door to our high school, they're Jefferson fans. And I, I get it. That's what they've known for a long time. So just changing the way they look at things and making them realize, hey, you know, this school right across the street is not bad either. Um, that, that's going to be difficult, and we know that. But I think we've got a good start to it, and the community's really bought in so far. And I just, you know, I thank them for their support and hope they continue to do so. It also probably doesn't help that Jefferson on the boys' basketball scope of things, probably the uh, best team in a lot of people's minds because of them being back-to-back -back region champions uh trying to make it back to the state tournament as well just talk i guess and give us your thoughts on the epac as a whole and how strong the conference will be this year yeah when, when i first got the job and i you know did an interview with you guys in the summer i i, I told you how strong and, and the epac in every year as it's you know any team can get beaten on any given night and i don't think that's any more true than this year uh like like I'm not sure if you rank teams one through six. I think you might have a consistent one or two, and I think the rest would just be all jumbled up, um, and, and probably rightfully so. I think a lot of teams got a lot to prove, a lot of new faces and new places with the, you know, the transfer rule and the way things happen now. And uh, it's going to be, a, you know, every night you, you walk into a fight, and, you know, it can be a close game. Anybody can get anybody on any given night. You know, teams are so good at scouting now. It's, you know, 
they, they know what you're going to do before you do. So you got to have adjustments and the EPAC is so balanced all the time. It's uh it's similar to a, you know, the big East conference in basketball, where if you go on the road, you're probably, you know, more than likely it's going to be a struggle that night or the big 12 or something like that. So, uh, I, it's a fun conference to coach in because of that, but it's also difficult. All right, Coach, uh, last one here. What are you looking forward to about Friday against Berkeley Springs? What will be some things you guys need to do as you get ready for the Skip Fowler? Yeah, well, we've only gotten to see Berkeley Springs once. Um, that was our first game the other night against Hedgesville, so we were out there and, and watched them. And um, obviously the game was a little lopsided, so, you know, it's hard sometimes to take anything away from those games. So, you know, you do the best you can, and our kids are typically really prepared. Our staff does a great job, and this is one of those where we're kind of going in on the fly a little bit, and uh, that, that as a coach doesn't make you feel the best. Uh, so it'll be anxious, like, you know, we're going to have to make an adjustments, make adjustments, excuse me, uh, as the game's going on. And I, sometimes our kids are a little bit, you know, some of them get, up, get that very quickly and some of them don't. And it's just part of us being a new staff, you know, so how we communicate and how we do things. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how we do and handle that. And then uh, we got a nice, nice break before the Skip Fowler. Hopefully we can rest up. Uh, we got a few guys a little under the weather right now, so hopefully they can get better and then, you know, keep building on what's been a great start. But we're not done yet, hopefully. Coach, we're excited about what you guys are doing in the early part of the year and looking forward to seeing uh, your team here in a few weeks. Thank you for right. your time. Thank you, guys. Yep, thank you, guys. That was Coach Ryan Miller, head coach of the Washington boys basketball team. Step aside, take a two-minute break. This segment brought to you by Orsini's Home.